there was a big black frog. Which lived in a well. It stayed a little away from the sea. It was born there and it had never ever moved out of the well. It knew nothing about the world and thought that it was the most intelligent frog on earth. It was fat as it was the only frog in the well eating all the worms and insects. It was leading a very happy life. One day, a frog from the sea lost its way and came near the well. Accidentally, it fell inside the well with a loud noise. The frog in the well that was sleeping was shocked at the noise. the stranger. It looks like me, but he is not black like me. Yeah, you stranger, what business you have here? Well, friend, I did not have any intentions of coming here. I am from the sea and I have lost my way. I fell inside the well accidentally, but it is good that I have met you. The frog in the well was satisfied with the answer, but it wanted to know more about the new frog. You told me that you are from the sea, right? Yes. What is that? How big is it? Is it as big as my well? The well frog was very eager to know about the sea. My friend, how do you compare the sea with your little well? Is your sea bigger than this? What nonsense! How do you compare the sea with your well? It is many thousand times bigger than your well. The well frog could not tolerate the answer. It thought that his well was the biggest of all did not like the frog which came from the sea. Ha! You are a liar. You think too much of yourself. That can be nothing bigger than a well. I don't believe you. That's because you have not seen a sea before. Come with me. I will take you to the sea. Ha! I am not here to believe you. You want to push me into the sea and you want to become a king of this well. That's why you're calling me. I know all these tricks. Get away from here. The sea frog was shocked to hear the words of the well frog. He wanted to explain to the well frog, but it thought it was no use talking to a stupid person. the well happily without saying the word. Ha <laughs> ha! He thought he can make a fool of me and send me to the sea. None can fool me. Nothing can be bigger than my well. Again, the big black frog sat on the well, eating happily all the insects of the well. 
moral none should develop attitude of the frog in the well towards others try to appreciate and understand the other person's point of view this is a sign of culture in a small village there lived a small boy named Haru he was undersized and had a small nose he was poor and had no father his mother looked after him He worked hard but he was able to earn only little as he was not educated. But his mother managed to take good care of him. He grew up to become a young man. From his childhood he had a problem. He was teased by his friends and other men in the village because of a small nose. Haru used to get angry but he was helpless. Time passed and one day his mother died. Haru was not able to tolerate the loss of his mother. He was feeling lonely and was crying thinking about his mother. One day, an old man from the village came to meet Haru. Haru, don't worry. Your mother has taken care of you all. These years to get married, and you can overcome all these. Haru was happy with the words of the old man. Sir, I'll let you know my decision tomorrow. Haru thought that it is correct for him to get married, but he decided that he should not get married to a beautiful girl as he thought that she will also make fun of him. Having decided that, he went to meet the old man the next day. Sir, I am prepared to get married, but I don't want a beautiful girl. Why is it so? Otherwise, sir, she will also tease me for my little nose. All right, Haru. I am happy that you have decided to marry. I will try to find a girl of your taste. After some days, the old man found a girl with a small nose in a nearby village. Haru married the girl and was very happy. He thought that all his problems would come to an end. But on the contrary, all the boys who used to make fun of Haru now joined together and made fun of both the husband and wife as noseless couple. All the efforts of Haru to stop their teasing went in vain. He chased them on the streets, complained to the elders, but nothing proved fruitful. 
he thought that he should pray to God who has created him with a small nose. Dear, I am going to the forest on an important work. Please stay here. Do not worry about me. Haru went to the forest and started meditating on the Lord. He prayed so sincerely that he neither moved nor took notice of anything. He prayed the whole day. And finally, God appeared before him. Haru's heart jumped when he saw God in front of him. Haru knelt down with folded hands before God. Yes, Haru, what do you want? Lord, be kind to me and grant my prayer. I grant you three boons. You throw your dice three times and ask for the boons. You will get whatever you ask for. God disappeared. Haru was very happy and ran to his home to give the news to his wife. She was glad to hear the news. First, you should ask for Will. No, no. What shall we do with wealth? We both have ugly noses. Let us first ask for beautiful noses. His wife wanted to have wealth first. And she tried stopping him from throwing the dice. This made Haru angry. He threw the dice and told hurriedly, We want noses and nothing but beautiful noses. Immediately their bodies were covered with noses. Both were shocked. Dear, you look so ugly. You two look equally ugly. What shall we do now? Haru threw the dice again. God, please have mercy on me. We do not want these noses. Please take them away. Immediately, all their noses, including their little noses, vanished. Both were noseless now and were looking uglier than before. Dear, I have lost my little nose too. Me too. What shall we do now? With two boons, we were not able to get what we really wanted. Please throw the dice again and ask for our original nose. Yes, what will we do with our wealth without a nose? Haru threw the dice for the third and last time. My lord, please forgive me and give back our original noses. His prayer was answered and they got back their original noses. Moral Opportunity once lost may not come again. One should make use of the opportunity wisely for successful life. In a village, there was a poor man by name Megu. He wanted to earn money by hook or crook. He tried many ways, but nothing clicked. Finally, upon hearing from people, he thought of a plan. 
he thought that if he could catch a ghost, he can command him and make money. With this ugly plan, he went in search of a ghost. He could not find a ghost. He thought that a sage could help him get a ghost and he went searching for a sage. One day, he met some woodcutters on the way. Brother, you go to the forest every day. Have you seen any sages there? Yes, sir. We know a sage who lives in the forest. Megu rushed to the forest. There, he met an old monk with matted hair and a long beard meditating before fire. Megu waited for the sage to open his eyes. My lord, you are my great god. Only you can help me. Why? What happened to you? Who are you and what do you want? Sir, I am a very poor man. I need a ghost to work for me. Teach me how to get hold of one. The sage was shocked and became angry, but he controlled himself. Do not trouble yourself, my child. Give up all these ideas and go home. Megu was not convinced. Every day he visited the sage and prayed for a ghost. Finally, the sage was fed up. Mago, you don't want to listen to me. All right, I will teach you a magic word. Repeat it three times and a ghost will appear. It will give you whatever you want. But beware, they are terrible beings. If you fail to give him any work, it will take your life. If you fail to give any work, it will take your life. That's easy, my lord. I can give it work all its life. The sage told the magic word. And Megu went to a remote place and chanted the word thrice. Megu trembled with fear on seeing the ghost. I am a ghost. I have been conquered by your magic. But you must keep me continuously employed. The moment you fail to give me work, I will kill you. Hi, ghost. Build me a palace. The ghost waved its hand and immediately there was a beautiful palace. It's done! Bring me money, jewels and precious stones. Within no time, the ghost filled the area with gold and money. Megu could hardly believe his eyes. Give me more work, else I will eat you up. Ghost! Clear this forest and build a city in this place. The city must have beautiful palaces, towers, ponds, roads, gardens, etc. Do you understand? I want a big and beautiful city immediately. This time the ghost won't be able to finish the job quickly. In the meantime, I'll plan some of the work for him. But before he could think, the whole forest disappeared and a beautiful city came up in its place. That's done. Anything more? Megu got frightened for he thought he could give him nothing more to do. Give me some more work 
else I will eat you up. Megu ran to the sage and fell on his feet. What's the matter? Sir, I don't have any other work left to give the ghost and now he wants to eat me up. Just then, the ghost arrived. Hey man, give me work, else I will eat you up right now. Sir, please save my life. I know only you can save my life. I don't want money. I don't want anything. I just want to live peacefully. You fool, stand up. There is no time to lose. The sage saw a dog standing nearby. Megu, cut the tail of this dog and give it to the ghost. Ask him to straighten it up. Megu cut the tail of the dog and gave it to the ghost. Straighten the tail and give it to me. <laughs> I can do this in no minute. Be ready. I'm really hungry. I will eat you up once I come back. The ghost tried to make the tail straight. But as soon as the ghost let it go, it instantly curled up again. It tried again and again. This went on for days and days. It became exhausted finally and came running to Megu. I was never in such a trouble before in my life. Sir, I will make a compromise with you. You let me off and I will let you keep all I have given you. I promise that I will not harm you. Megu was very happy. He thanked the sage and went home happily. Moral One should not be greedy. One should gain wealth by right means alone. The world cannot be changed at one's will. It will run in its own course like the dog's curly tail. Once upon a time, there was a young sage by name Narada. He was an ardent devotee of Lord Vishnu. He was well versed in spiritual knowledge. One day, when he was going through a book, he came across a new word, Maya. What is this new word, Maya? I am not able to get the meaning of the word. I should get the meaning somehow. He asked some sages, but none were able to give him the meaning of Maya. Finally, he thought that Lord Krishna will be the right person to give him the meaning. He left for Dwarka, where Lord Krishna lived. Welcome, Narada. It's very nice of you to come and visit me. But you don't appear normal. You seem to be disturbed. May I know the reason? Yes, my lord. You have correctly understood my mind. I have come to find an answer. What is it? My lord, I could not find the meaning of the word Maya. Please explain me the meaning of that word. Is this the reason for your trouble? Well, you will know what Maya is. But of course, not now. You are tired. Stay for a few days with me. 
It is a blessing for me, my Lord, to be in your company. After a few days, Narada started asking Krishna the meaning of the word Maya. So, Krishna took him one day to a distant place on the way. Narada, I'm too thirsty. Can you please fetch me some water? My Lord, please wait here. I will go to the nearby village and get some water for you. I will be back in half an hour. All right, Narada. I will wait for you here. Narada went to the village and knocked the door of a hut. A beautiful girl opened the door. Narada was stunned to see the girl. An old man came out of the hut. Sir, may I know who you are? Sir, I am a traveler. I have come to get some water. Why don't you stay here for some days, take rest and then go? Narada was highly pleased as he did not expect this invitation. He gladly accepted and stayed in the hut. He forgot completely about Krishna seeing the beauty of the girl. He became close to the girl one day. Young lady, I wish to marry you and make you as my wife. Please give me your consent. Please get the consent of my father. Narada was very happy. He approached her father. Sir, I have something to say to you. Yes, sir. Please tell me. Sir, I would like to marry your daughter and make her my wife. I will be happy to give her to you if she is interested. Thank you, sir. Soon, Narada got married to the beautiful girl and stayed in the same house. He was very happy. His wife was too good to him. Years passed. He became the father of three kids. He did not bother about the outside world. Twelve years passed. One day, suddenly there was a heavy storm. village. Narada's house was washed away. He struggled hard to rescue his wife and kids. But all of them, except Narada, drowned in the floods. Mm -hmm. 
Narada became almost mad, unable to bear the loss of his wife and kids. He sat on the ground and started crying. Oh, Almighty God, what mistake have I done? Why did you punish me so cruelly? I am not able to bear the loss of my wife and beloved children. Please take me also. Suddenly, Narada heard a voice. Narada, Narada I, I have been waiting, waiting for, for 12, 12 years, years for you. you. You, you have, have promised to get water within half an hour. Do you remember me? Narada was shocked to hear this. He fell on the ground. My Lord Krishna, will you forgive me? I have forgotten completely about you. Please forgive me. Had have understood the meaning of my Yes, my lord. When I met a girl, I forgot about you. When I got a good family, I forgot about everyone. All these pleasures are volatile. This is Maya illusion. I understand, my lord. Narada walked on the sands of the river with a heavy heart. Moral, nothing is permanent in this world. Whether it is happiness or sorrow, nothing is permanent. But if we want lasting happiness, we should be sincere to the Almighty 